Tick rate is how many times a second action in Counter-Strike is updated. You can think of it as a video file, where each frame updates where you're stood, where you're looking, whether you're firing a bullet, and whether those bullets are hitting other people. All that kind of stuff. Matchmaking is 64 tick, that's 64 times a second, which is a higher frame rate than this video is. But they operate in a similar way. Every frame you see of this fight is like a tick, updating the positions of the players and whether a bullet is being fired or not. Videos are 60 instead of 64, but it's close enough to get the idea. The jumps between the frames you see here are roughly how far apart individual ticks are in game. Some people don't think 64 tick is enough. Here is 128 tick, represented by a 120 FPS video slowed down. Some people think 128 tick feels better to play on and helps their shots to hit, but also remember it would do the same for your enemies, so in theory it should balance out. But higher tick rate does other things as well. Apparently it makes bunny hopping and surfing easier, and changes where grenades go if you throw them whilst running or jumping. I can't say for sure whether it does or not. I avoid testing this kind of thing as I find it hard to limit all of the variables, my performance in game being one of them. But many people swear that higher tick rate is better, and now they've had their chance to prove it. Master server modder, Kinsey, has been running a test that you may have taken part in, and the results are now in. On a popular Reddit post the other week, he invited you to join his server and to play up to four rounds. At the end of each, you were asked to choose whether you thought it was 128 tick or not, and then the server would restart with a new randomised tick rate. But there was more to it than that, because while some of the servers were 128 tick and others 64, others were just 47, because why not? But could people correctly identify which servers were 128 tick? No. 20% of results had to be removed since they didn't submit a guess. Many of these were because the server shut down because it wasn't populated enough to start the test, and 5% of people cheated to try and find out the server's tick rate. Shame on you. From the results that remain, from the people playing on 128 tick servers, 53% correctly guessed that they were playing on 128 tick, which is just a little bit better than randomly guessing. Unfortunately, of those on 64 tick servers, 53% of them also thought it was 128 tick. So people can't tell if a server is 64 or 128 tick. It was only with the 47 tick servers that people thought the experience was worse, but 46% of them still thought it was 128 tick. But what do these results mean? Well, I guess it means that people can't tell the difference and that 64 tick is enough. There isn't evidence to suggest that 128 tick improves the experience, and only a hint that 47 tick makes things worse. But you've got to accept what this test was. It tested 905 players of all skill levels and abilities. Each result was only based on a single round. Had it targeted the surfing or bunny hopping community, maybe the results would have been different. I think this test has been a good starting point, but it raises more questions than answers, opening the doors to further and perhaps more focused tick rate testing. It is sad to see that these proper results comprised of just 905 players. Given the exposure the test received on Reddit and YouTube, this is disappointing. But you've got to make do with what you've got. As I've already mentioned, there were people who tried to cheat, and those who simply didn't know. Even a test as simple as this one throws up a lot of complications, like what to do with players who join late, or those with a high ping. Is one round enough to warrant a conclusion? Should the matches have been split based on skill level? And so on. But please, don't dismiss these results for one of these reasons. If you blame low-skilled players for ruining the test, you'd be missing the point. These results won't show if high-skilled players are more likely to correctly guess the tick rate. It wasn't looking for that. But even if high-skilled players are better at telling, when the results as a whole come out so close to being 50-50 chance, it kind of suggests that 64 tick matchmaking is good enough for most people. Which is what it's for. We'll get back to Kinsey's test, but for now, let's consider what tick rate is. Even 64 will update the action every 16 milliseconds. Think about that. How much changes in 16 milliseconds? Time for some examples. If you're firing a rifle, that's five ticks between each shot. This is how far a running player moves every tick on a 64 tick server. This is a worst case scenario. Enemies, nearby, running across the screen. It takes about four ticks for their head to move a whole head's worth of distance when on a server running at 64 ticks a second. The question is simple, is this enough? Unfortunately, the answer is incredibly complicated. And the more I learn, the more complicated it becomes. Even with help from Kinsey, who knows his stuff, I still don't feel qualified to give a definitive answer, and I'd be wary of anybody who can. 
In an earlier version of this video, I attempted to explain it, then got into interpolation, lag compensation, made something that looked eerily like a topic I covered a while back while trying to work out what happened to hit reg between ticks, and by the third page I began to question the very fabric of reality. So I'll try to condense it down to this. There's only so much you can do with a server where your ping can considerably exceed the length of a tick. If I fire a shot, there's no way that other players can see this until that information has gone to the server and then back out to them again. That is a problem when you're talking about a game based around Twitch reflexes. There's some degree of time travel and buffering involved and, all things considered, I'm honestly surprised that matchmaking over the internet is as good as it is. Being a simple number, where more is better, 64 tick is easy to villainise, especially if you slow the action down. But as fleshy humans playing on a game with many approximations and delays between us and the server, it seems strange to fixate on tick rate being the be all and end all. For LAN, Sure, have 128 tick, why the hell not? But when you're dealing with the sprawling labyrinth that is the internet, there are other factors besides the tick rate that determine how good a server is. For us in England, I honestly think having some 64 tick matchmaking servers hosted in this country would be a better way of improving the experience than to be gaming on a 128 tick server somewhere in mainland Europe. As an example, let's go back in time. Back, back, back. Counter-Strike Source didn't have 64 tick. It was 66, and instead of 128, the fastest servers would run at 100, and the worst servers would be 33 tick. I remember our clan would buy a 66 tick server, but it would always start at just 33 tick. I suspect the server company did this deliberately to lighten the load. Each of their computers would host several Counter-Strike servers, so the fewer ticks they had, the faster their servers would run. Or maybe they'd just run more servers on each machine. Who knows? If you noticed your 66 tick server was just 33 tick and let them know, it would magically jump to 66. I was okay with this, since I figured the fewer people who knew this, the better the performance would be for ours. Our 66 tick server was great. It was in England, so we all got great ping. Shots would feel so much more responsive on this than on the servers hosted in France or Germany or wherever else it was. Since CSGO matchmaking isn't hosted in England, I blame this for our country's poor performance. Problem was, it was kind of accepted that if a clan match was to be played, it would be played on the server with the highest tick rate. Some clans would boast of having a 100 tick server, so we'd accept that we'd have to play on theirs. And guess what? Most of these servers were terrible. They were laggy, jerky. If you wanted to hit people, you'd eventually resort to spray and pray, then wait for a while for the server to tell you if your shots had registered or not, as packet loss shot through the roof and your PC lost connection to the server for a few valuable seconds. It was unplayable. I suspect most of these were hosted on one of their players' own PCs. If you ever think that matchmaking servers are bad, you really need to play a game hosted on somebody's laptop. Though, funnily enough, they were happy to immediately dismiss ours just for being 66 tick. But they were allowed to, because 100 tick was accepted as being the only thing that mattered back then. Story over. All things being equal, 128 tick is better than 64. But there are other factors that often dwarf the improvement an increased tick rate provides. And 64 tick is enough for a good experience if on a good server with a good ping. I think that's apparent from the test results. Another fun result from Kinsey's test? Did people who played better get a higher average tick rate? Maybe. I will show you the data and you can make your own mind up about it. This is how people who achieved different KD ratios rated the server. You can see that, in general, the higher their KD, the more likely they were to think that they were playing on a 128 tick server. I'd have liked a larger sample size for each category here, but like I said, we've got to make do with what we've got. And from what we can see, how people performed does appear to influence what they think the tick rate is. But maybe there's some truth to this. So let's compare these predictions to what the average server tick rate really was. And this is interesting. Those who played better were more likely to be on a 128 tick server. But so were the people who performed the worst and the average server tick rate was lowest for those who performed just below average. What if those who performed the best and worst were in the same matches as each other? That sounds like it makes sense, doesn't it? Like if one person's doing really well, somebody else has to suffer. But if this is the case, the maybe higher tick rate allows for the better players to perform better, and that's why the weaker players performed worse on these high tick rate servers. Like I've said, take these possibilities with a match load of salt. In fact, the only conclusion that's abundantly clear from this is the gap between players' guesses 
and the actual server tick rate. In total, just over 50% of players thought they were playing on a 128 tick server, but in reality, only 29% of them were. Had people been able to tell the difference between 128 and the lower tick rates, you'd have hoped that more players would have said that they felt that they were on lower tick rate servers, but at 50%, they might as well have been randomly guessing. Kinsey decided to compare results another way. He looked at how many of the hits were headshots, and only included entries with 5 or more kills. And from this, he got a very nice chart, where the higher the headshot percentage, the more likely they thought it was 128 tick. My chart wasn't quite so nice since I split the categories a different way, but the same trend can be seen. And if we include how many servers were 128 tick, wow. Look at the 60% headshots and above category. Almost everybody here thought they were playing on a 128 tick server, and almost all of them were correct. Wow! This could be the proof we need that shows that 128 tick is better for headshots. If it wasn't for the sample size, which for this category was… 7. Again, not Kinsey's fault. You've got to make do with what you have. But this is nowhere near big enough to make a definitive conclusion from. And get this, 5 of these 7 players were on 128 tick, and the other 2 were on 47. And what's more, looking at all of the people who scored 5 kills and above, only 24% of them were on 128 tick servers. 33% were on 64 tick, and a massive 44% of these high achievers were on 47 tick. Well, what a roller coaster ride this has been. Whatever your opinion on tick rate is, it's safe to say that Kinsey has hosted a fascinating experiment here that has given you a chance to test it for yourself. I urge you to check out the results in this video's description. He'll go into more depth than I have. And if you want to try the test yourself, you're in luck. The experiment has been extended though these results will be kept separately from those already recorded. And if you've already done the test, you can see if you got your guesses right. Links are in the description.